The article being reviewed today is titled Bobblehead Doll Syndrome in a Child with a Third Ventricular Cyst in Hydrocephalus, and it was written by Nelia Zamponi et al., based out of Ancona, Italy. It can be found in the May 2005 copy of Child's Nervous System, the official journal of the International Society for Pediatric Neurosurgery. It encompasses all aspects of pediatric neuroscience, including development and growth, degenerative disorders, neurology, neurosurgery, and trauma, among other things. I'm plugging this journal because it is the main source of my information for my Wikipedia article on bobblehead doll syndrome. Because this disorder is so rare, very few articles have been written on it, and even fewer journals have published these articles. So I just wanted to thank them, and thank the Georgia Tech Library for subscribing. Now on to the article itself. I chose this article because it not only provided a case report of a child with the disorder, but it also included a great summary on the history, pathophysiology, and treatment options of the syndrome. So many authors just provide their insight on what their patient was going through and how they fixed the problem. It was refreshing to get some solid background information since I obviously just can't search for it on Wikipedia. So to get you all more familiar on the topic, I'll give you a brief tour of bobblehead doll syndrome. Since 1966, when the syndrome was first described, only 34 cases have been reported and written about. That's less than one case per year around the world. The syndrome is characterized as a vertical head bobbing motion being done at around two to three times per second. Since I found no video documentation, I'll try to reenact the movement based on what I've learned so far. So I'm thinking it goes a little something like this. Zamponi reported the average age of the diagnosis as three years and change, with the average age of surgical intervention just under seven years. It has been shown that early diagnosis and surgical treatment of bobblehead doll syndrome can result in full recovery, but because of its rarity, when a doctor is presented with a patient with the tick-like movements, their first inclination would probably not be bobblehead doll syndrome. It just isn't that well known, and hopefully by making this movie and creating a public source of information through my Wikipedia article, more people can become familiar and more children can be healed. The pathology of the syndrome is still unknown. However, those with bobblehead doll syndrome have also been reported as having supercellar arachnoid or third ventricular cysts, aqueductal stenosis, hydrocephalus, or cystic choroid plexus papilloma. If you have no idea what I just said, don't worry. I'm not too good on it either. Most cases showed cystic lesions on the third ventricle, as seen here. The third ventricle is one of four cerebrospinal fluid filled cavities in the brain responsible for transportation of the protective CSF through the midbrain. Damage to it can lead to hydrocephalus, which is a buildup of fluid leading to brain swelling. It is proposed that the added pressure in the brain is causing another region in the brain to act up and cause the bobbing. Luckily, relief of the pressure through surgery has shown to relieve the patient of the previously uncontrollable bobbing. By placing shunts to help drain the excess fluid, the brain pressure is relieved. In cases where full recovery was not attained, there was either an improvement or no change at all. As a supplement to the background information, Zamponi provided a table describing the 34 reviewed cases that include age of diagnosis, pathology, treatment performed, and treatment results, and that's shown here. This edition really made the paper stand out above the others I've read because it showed that Zamponi was not writing the paper about how he alone cured someone, but instead he went the extra step to describe past cases in order to hopefully get a bigger picture about how and why bobblehead doll syndrome occurs. The illustrative case provided by Zamponi described a three-year-old patient with abnormal head movements. It was prevalent whenever awake, yet disappeared when asleep. It was most prevalent when moving, making running or climbing stairs difficult. The child was first reported as having the tremors in just his head and neck, but soon began to include the arms and shoulders. Zamponi listed the multiple tests run to get a better understanding of what was going wrong. He performed an EEG, endocrinology exams, electromyographic exams, and MRIs. The MRI showed a dilatation of the third ventricle and a balloon cyst seen here. Zamponi, after extensive review of literature on past cases, decided that surgery was the best option for treatment and placed a ventriculoperitoneal shunt in the child's brain. Immediately, all head bobbing, tremors, and ataxia disappeared. In a follow-up MRI, seen here, 
A reduction of the ventricle was apparent. There was reduced compression of the thalami and hypothalamic nuclei, as well as no evidence of the previous cysts. Zamponi also reported that since the surgery, the child has remained free of bobblehead doll syndrome symptoms. In conclusion, Zamponi emphasized that reduction of the CSF pressure is really the best therapeutical treatment of bobblehead doll syndrome. Well referenced, it was evident that Zamponi's article was thought out and planned. His attention to detail and ability to describe some very complex situations made this article one of the most helpful I have read so far. I'd like to personally thank Dr. Zamponi and all the others who helped him write the article. And thank you for watching. Now here's the legal stuff.